Hey, what's up, day walkers and fellow travelers of the night? Before we start this video, I want to give a big shout out to Gray Malkin Gaming and Collectibles. I'm going to put a link down to all their channels below. So please go subscribe to them. They're amazing. And they're the reason we have a lot of these cards, as is Steel City Collectibles and Pittsburgh. I'm going to put a link to their website down below as well. I highly encourage, if you're a fan of collecting, to check both of these websites out and these people out. They're awesome. And without them, there's no way Blue or I could have completed this collection or done anything we're going to show you in the video today. So thank you to both of these great people and companies, everyone who works for them, everyone who you know supports them too, the great communities. And we've had a blast knowing them and hope to continue to know them for many years to come and make more videos from buying stuff from them. It's no secret if you've seen any videos on this channel, especially recent ones from February till now, that we are big Moon Knight fans and that we've been collecting these amazing Moon Knight trading cards from Upper Deck. So again, another company we want to thank for making these. These cards came out fantastic. I'm going to kind of give you a review as we go through our binder, and I'm going to show you some other versions and other cards that aren't in this binder so you can kind of see what to expect if you're out there collecting and you're a Moon Knight fan and you haven't gotten any of these cards yet. They're still available, and they're also available on EPAC now if you collect things digitally. And there's extra bonuses and extra cards you can get if you get them digitally. So we'll go over that as we go through this. And this one, this was a card that kept popping up when we were with the Gray Malkins as uh, our friend Noggins. He really liked this card, so we sent him some, and then we ended up giving him an entire set of this collection. Um, really awesome dude. Noggins is fantastic. And that's another thing is this community of trading card collectors they opened us with welcome, you know, with big big arms wide open, hugging us. Like, it was really cool to enter this community because I've opened a couple trading cards over the years, but I never really got involved with the community of trading card collectors. And that was something blue, you know, my altar is a big thing and a big part of. He watches, you know, Spidey Hits and all these guys, Marvel Madness MCU on, uh, on YouTube, and then found the Grey Malkins. Like, he found a lot of these people and a lot of them were nice enough to open their doors to us and let us on their podcasts and on their shows and talk about Moon Knight. And we are so grateful to now be a very small part of this community. And we will have more trading cards soon, um, for sure. But uh, for Moon Knight, though, this was just a big one for us. And we spent a lot of money. I think we got nearly, no, actually over two cases uh, overall of these cards. So we collected a ton. We just had a ton of PayPal credit that was sitting there waiting for us to spend. And we decided, you know what, we're just going to use it on this because, you know, it'll, we, we had lost our dog and we were like, we want to do something that'll cheer us up and also get us communicating as a system because we're still working on that too through therapy. So, uh, obviously, as you said, I'm using words like system and alters. We have OSDD one. We were diagnosed a couple years ago and Moon Knight is a really positive representation of DID, which is dissociative identity disorder. And that's, uh, we have a version of that basically where we just have different shades of us and we compartmentalize memories and experiences and skill sets. And, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, a lot going on with us. And so two of us, Blue and I, we kind of came across the Moon Knight show. I've always known about the character, but Blue learned about him through the show here with Oscar Isaac. And he really loved the interpretation of, of what the message of the show was of these two alters kind of coming together um, after all these years of not knowing kind of that one and the other exist. And that's what I was going through. And he thought it would help me understand what was happening to me. And and it did in a way. It's it's a silly superhero show on top of it, but it's still like some of the DID stuff and the you know communication and the goals of bonding were there. So we're really grateful to Muhammad Dieb and Oscar Isaac and May Kalamawe and everyone who worked on this show. You all did a great job and, and the message was not lost, at least on one system that's out there. And I don't know if that makes a difference, but it did in our lives. So thank you for making the show and thank you Upper Deck for collecting all the show's greatest moments on cards here. So this is the set, like I said, in sand, you start with the nine ensemble cards and these you get, you know, pretty frequently they're in you know almost every pack um, that you can get one of these but some of them are more rare than others so that's kind of the thing uh, blue is really good with numbers and he kind of did a breakdown of how rare it is to get certain cards now there is an even number i think of all the cards but depending on where you get your box from and you know everything that depends on you know if you get more of one card and more than another so once he started realizing that with our steel city cards that's when he reached out to gray malkins and said hey can we buy some boxes from you and then purple helped out and you know then i got involved so yeah, really, really cool that uh, he figured that out. So as he got 
boxes from Gray Malkins and then from Steel City, we were getting the odds increased of us getting, you know, more and more sets. So we are selling sets. We have a bunch of these sets uh, to sell. So if you're interested, just reach out to us. We're selling them for really cheap if you want a complete set of these in the base color. Um, I don't think we have, I think we have a second set in sand, but we're saving it for something. So here we go. Uh, and I mean, when I say second set, I mean third set because I have a set here in the binder and blue has his own sand set. And then we have a spare one after that. So yeah, but this is the main cards were the ensembles, the, the first nine cards. And then you get about 70 cards that are just from the show itself. And you can see all these great shots here, uh, which I love. They captured some really good moments. There's some that I was like, oh, I don't know if I would have picked this shot versus this shot. But, you know, overall, I still think they did a really good job and captured some great character moments, which is really cool. And the cinematography on the show I thought was really good. So I think Upper Deck had an easy time to, you know, and probably a difficult time at, you know, in certain instances where they have to pick from a couple shots and go, all right, which is the best one? But they all look great. So I can imagine that there was some ease to picking which cards to use in the set and some difficulties because <laughs> it's like, oh man, there's so many good choices. And even something as simple as this, like the scale, I'm sure some people will be like, oh, why? why? Like, why do a card on just a scale? I'm like, yeah, but it was such a cool moment in that episode of watching that those, you know, scales balance and, you know, wondering if they're ever gonna and what it means when they do. I, so I kind of was okay with something like that, like a prop being a card, I think. And it was, a, it's a good shot. And then you have something like this though, where there's these three shots here and I'm like, well, that's a good one. And then maybe one of these two, but I probably would have substituted one of these for a different shot in the show of like Crowley or someone else that was, you know, in the asylum here or, you know, the, the, the health facility, mental health facility that they are, I would have maybe done a different shot. Um, but again, just, pre you know, preference and who knows, maybe working off of the certain assets they got, maybe this is what, you know, made the most sense, but it, I still think overall they did a good job and they picked a, a good set of stuff here. But then once you get through the 70 cards that are all pulled from episodes of the show, uh, which is all six episodes they pull from, they get to the behind the scenes stuff and they start with Conchu's head. Actually, no, it starts at the apartment here. Um, you do get this shot of them talking about Jake Lockley. I would have liked a card that actually had Jake Lockley on it, <laughs> but uh, yeah, who knows? I don't know why they didn't do that. That would have been great though. Um, season two, right? But then you get into the behind the scenes. So the last 11 cards in the set are actually all behind the scenes shots. And these base cards, these 90 base cards, they come in, like I said, a number of variants. So you get the base card, which looks like this, and it's kind of got like a, a gray tone to it. Then you get the, the sand, obviously. And no, we have not rainbowed any of the cards. We're close on a couple, but... And then now we have the new digital e-pack, so it's even harder to rainbow some of these. Um, but this is the sky blue variant, which are really cool looking. And these are one in a box uh, on average. Sometimes you might get a box that doesn't have one. And if you don't get one of these, you might get the card in midnight blue, which I don't have this card in midnight blue, but I do have a Mr. Knight ensemble card from Blue's collection. That I borrowed <laughs> so, so I could show it off because uh, he really loves this card. Mr. Knight's his favorite. So uh, yeah, really awesome. Um, but that's Midnight Blue and these are much more rare. There's only, you know, each card, there's 49 of these. And this card, there's 199 of these. So there's 199 blue, sky blue versions of this card. So that's all that exists. And there's only 49 of these in Midnight Blue that exist. So, uh, and these are, like I said, more rare to find, maybe one in every couple boxes to get. But these sky blues though, on average, you'll probably get one in a box if you buy these, whether it's digital or not. Um, then there's also the bronze cards, which are very rare. And there's only 10 of each card in bronze. So this is, you know, one of 10 cards. I think it's number, yeah, it's number seven here. And so all these cards are numbered on the back. So that way you know where you stand on the, the set. Um, so really cool. Some people try to buy, if they find a favorite card, they might try to get all 10 and, and everything. I don't know if anyone's that, um, into this on this series for Moon Knight. I, I don't know if there's that many hardcore fans that are trying to do that to them, but there are people that try to rainbow cards and get every version. And now there's another version, which is gunmetal. So if you buy these in digital e-pack, if you get five of these in the base card color, the gray, if you get five of them, so that's another reason why if you keep buying digital cards and you get duplicates, don't stress about it because you can combine your five duplicates on the Upper Deck website and get a gunmetal version of a card. So I might try to do that at some point just to get one gunmetal card, 
but as of right now, I haven't done it. I have bought some e-packs just to see what they're they're all about, and uh, but I just didn't haven't gotten enough yet to get a gunmetal. And then last but not least, another variant you could get is a printing plate, which we got this on the Gray Malkin page. So you know, big shout out to them. They unboxed this for us, and I it's so cool that they got this. And our name is Seek, obviously, and this card's name is Hide, which I thought was very awesome. <laughs> and it's in yellow. It's a yellow printing plate. It makes it look like an old photograph. But this is like a metal plate, and this is one of the cards they use to help print the other ones, and they do them in four colors. So if you do get a printing plate, you could get a black one, a cyan one, a magenta one, or a yellow one. So if you're a printing plate collector, there's four of these, one in each color. But they're one of ones, and it's really cool, and you get the congratulations on the back of them. So for the base cards, those are all your options. You can get all of them in the sky blue, the midnight blue, any of these in here that you're seeing on the sand colors. You can get them in the base color, all that. So a lot of options, and they're yeah, they're just really cool. I just I think they did a great job on these. And then next we have the inserts. So we're going to transfer into those now and talk about these. These are called the Fist of Vengeance, and they kind of have this symbol on them that makes you look through Moon Knight's mask. That's kind of the, the effect they're going for here. Now the images shown inside the cards are reused assets from the base set, which... Um, I don't know. Like, I don't know how budgets work on cards. I feel like you're just taking images, so I can't imagine it would have been that much harder to just put a different image in here, especially when you're printing a completely different you know, barrier around it and border. So to me, I would have probably not used the same exact images. But again, I don't know how that affects budget or whatever. So for me, I can't really comment on that. I just know for me personally, when I was looking through these, I'm like, oh man, but I already have these in these cards, I, why not put different images in these ones? But that's also me entering the space of trading card collecting. I'm sure Blue has, you know, a reason for it, and he would know the answer to, to that. But for me, I don't. So I was like, okay, well, so you're getting my opinion today because I'm the one recording this video. I would have liked to see different images, but I still think the cards are cool. And these also come in the different variants. You can get these in the sand color. You can get these in Shattered Reflection, uh, which is another card that you can get the base cards in, and I have some of those right here. This is what a Shattered Reflection looks like. These are numbered to 32, I believe. And yeah, so this is card number 15 of 32, but they have kind of like the shattered glass look to them. So they're called Shattered Reflections, and these are pretty rare. I think in, you know, we only got like four or five of them or six of them. Um, so they're one in every, like, I would say four boxes or five boxes that you might get one. And you can get them not only in the regular base cards, but you can get them in the Chambers of the Gods and the Travelers of the Night and even these Fist of Vengeances, um, you know, these insert cards. So there's, again, a lot of different versions of each card that you can get. But for, you know, us, we just wanted a sand set of as, what, as much as we can complete of the base cards and the inserts. We are missing one of these in sand, the Fist of Vengeances. Um, and of course, it's the last card. These are... The first 18 cards, but there's 20 in the set. And these two, unfortunately, um, we don't have. Oh, this one we have in sand, but the last card, card 20, we do not. So we'll probably track it down on eBay at some point. But for right now, it's, it's not that big of a deal. And we got the chambers. These, again, we got them in sand. But we have a couple of them like this that are in the base as well. So just cool. Another series uh, of inserts there. I think the... Fist of Vengeance is these were one in every two and a half packs. So basically every like, you know, five packs, you would get two of these uh, total. Uh, so they're pretty easy to find, especially if you buy a box, you'll get a good chunk of them. But the um, the Chamber of the Gods here, which these use, you know, concept art and digital art from the making, the pre-production of the show. And this is what I'm talking about. I'm like, good. These are new images to the cards. Like there's no base cards of any of these shots. These are all artwork that they use to create the show, which are also featured in the Art of Moon Knight book. So I've seen these images before, and Blue has seen these images before, but to have them in the cards, these are a lot of people's favorite, the Chamber of the Gods, because they use artwork. And, you know, a lot of trading card collectors are fans of artists. So to see actual artwork in here, I think this was a good move to do for the Chamber of the Gods set, but I probably would have made the set bigger because there's so much more cool art <laughs> that they could have picked from. So I probably would have made the Fist of Vengeance cards less and made these more, in my opinion, because just to get more artwork in there. Um, but uh, yeah, these are cool. And you can get them in base. You can get them in, you know, the Shadow Reflections, the Sand. Uh, you get printing plates for them. 
And those are, like I said, the Chamber of the Gods, one in every five packs. So in a box of 15 packs, you're on average going to get maybe two or three of these Chamber of the Gods. And then lastly, the Travelers of the Night, which, again, you can get in sand. This ring around the art there is going to be in sand, and the lettering will be in silver. But if you get a base one, the ring around it is in gray, and the lettering is in, like, bronze. So they kind of flip them. You know, so that's how you know. And then on the back, they'll say sand on them. If they're sand variants, they'll say sand written somewhere. And these Travelers of the Night, these are only 10 cards in the set. Like I said, the Fist of Vengeance were 20. And then for the Chamber of the Gods, that was 15. But the Travelers of the Night, there's only 10 cards. And again, reused images, which, yeah, okay, that's fine, I guess. But I, I pr would have preferred different images. But they come in the sand and the base as well and different versions. But there's 10 of them. And they are one in every 15 packs. So on average, you might only get one or two in a box uh, on those ones. So moving on to the Acetate Antiquities. These come in four different levels. So there's level one, two, three, and four. Level one cards are these first six. I have a whole set of them, me and Blue. So we just condensed them all into here. He has, uh, I think he has a full set of ones also. Um, in his binder. But his binder is a little different. He mainly just has the base cards and a couple other things. And he's also, you know, has some cards. We have so many extras. So he started doing creative things with some of the cards. And we might show those off at some point down the road. But uh, but he, yeah, his binder is smaller and it's it's different. It, it looks a lot like the, the blue one I showed at the beginning with the gray Malkin sticker on it. So it's this size. And he has a gray Malkin sticker on his as well. So those are his cards. But us on here... We have the acetate level ones, these six, they're one in every 30 packs and you can kind of see through them as you can see there. And then if you put like a white sheet behind them, or in this case, if I do this, it makes the images look more clear. So you can put like a, a base behind it or a white background and it'll show the image in full. So yeah, I like those acetate antiquities. They're really cool looking. And like I said, level ones are one in every 30 packs, level twos, one in every 48 packs. And we are missing some here, as you can see. So we did not get a complete set of these. We weren't even expecting to, actually. I think with our goal, we were just hoping to get all the Chamber of the Gods, Fist of Vengeances, and Travelers of the Night. So to even have some of the Antiquities was great, but we have a majority of them, and we have a lot. We're just missing a couple here from level two and three. Um, but yeah, we got Mr. Knight up there. And these look, they're just cool looking. I like these cards a lot. But they do fall apart. The paint job on them, or whatever it is, the printing job, they flake off. So you gotta be very careful with these. Uh, because they flake really easily. So we got these level three is one in every 120 packs and level four, which are these six back here where we're missing two of them. But these ones, and this was great. Spidey Hits sent us this one. And like I said, the community has been great. And any cards we've been missing, we've had people offer to send them or trade with us. And it's been fantastic. So I'm sure at some point we'll get a full set of acetate antiquities. We were never intending to do that. But since we're only missing like five or six, we, we're going to track them down at some point. But these level fours, they're every 240 packs, actually. So, yeah, and we actually got a Moon Knight one. Moon Knight was a hard character to get for some reason. We got a lot of Mr. Knight stuff and definitely a lot of May stuff, uh, Scarlet Scarab. Um, but we did not get a lot of Moon Knight. He was a hard guy to track down in some of these uh, insert cards. And these are my favorite insert cards. These are the phases of the moon. And, again, these come in different categories because, obviously, there's eight phases of the moon. You got New Moon, Waxing Crescent, First Quarter, Waxing Gibbous. You got Full Moon, Waning Gibbous, Third Quarter, and Waning Crescent. Uh, so there's a lot of different versions. So each one of these, uh, all the eight ones I listed, there's six cards in each one, like the Acetate. So that's kind of like a level system too. But I like how they're cut. They look amazing. And as you can see here, we have a lot of the first ones uh, of the first, you know, new, new. Actually, no, these are, I actually don't have a complete run of anything, actually. Uh, this is New Moon up here. And then we got uh, the uh, waning. So these are all new moons. Then we got full moons. So I try to just pair these up with the characters. It's like her and her avatar, you know, and him and his avatar, you know, Mr. Knight and his avatar. You know, we actually got a moon knight on one of these, which is cool. And then you get things like Heka Priests, which are, um, you know, cool that they made a card for him. It's uh, that's a character that showed up in one episode, in episode four of the show. But uh, cool, just cool to see because it was different artwork and we didn't get a good shot of them in the base set. So... Um, except in the hide card, which you, you see him, you know, here doing his thing. So, yeah, these uh, these different moon phases, though, they're my favorite. And the last two, the third quarter, you can only get those with an autograph. 
So I actually have, luckily, that autograph. We have right here, this was the first auto that we pulled, and it was from Steel City, so big shout out to them. It was a box that we purchased from them that came in the mail, and it has Conchu's autograph, F. Murray Abraham. And this is a Lunar Phase Signature Series, third quarter. And these are numbered to 50, so this is card 35. And there's also the Waning Crescent Moon, and that is numbered to 25, and you can only get those with an autograph on them. So we were hoping to get a full set, like one of each lunar phase, but we cannot find a waning crescent. And the few times we did on eBay, they sold out, you know, too fast. Like we were bidding on them and we got outbid. So uh, we're still trying to find a waning crescent, number 25 with an autograph on it. Hopefully a May one, because those weren't going for too much money. And, uh, and so that was in our price range. So we might track one down. Plus we want an autograph of hers because she's one of the few characters we didn't get an autograph from. And you can imagine after getting two cases and, and plus some, a few, plus a few boxes past two cases, we did get autographs and they are really rare. Some of them are in one in every like 360 packs. Some are one in every 800 or 900 packs and some in, are in every like a thousand packs. But there's a couple different autograph series. This is one of them, which we're actually selling this card or trying to on eBay, trying to find it a good home because we have two autographs from this actress who played uh, Amit. So, or did the voice of Amit and the motion control, I think, too, of Amit. So, um, yeah, this is a cool card, though. And this is just an, a Moon Knight autograph, kind of a, a regular autograph card. And these are more common to get and not as rare as like the lunar phase Conchi that we have. But then we also have an acetate card with F. Murray Abraham's autograph, which is really cool. To have that so we got our conchu autograph there and that's a, a, a pretty rare one and this one this one's number two i believe yeah out of a hundred so there's only a hundred of these that exist and we got card 47 then this is the other Amit one we have the gold scarab and i was like wow this is really cool i don't want to get rid of this because the way it's cut it's almost like a jambalaya um in a way and uh but it's kind of scarab shaped but i like that it's really cool looking and this was the last one we opened. And again, I think this was from Steel City. Uh, Brett, the awesome Brett, who has been so nice and generous to us, opening these cards for us over at Steel City. I believe he pulled this one for us. And it's uh, it's gorgeous. <laughs> it's really cool looking. It's not numbered, uh, but it is, uh, you know, it is cool looking, though. So I, I was like, yeah, we got to keep that one. And then our last autograph, our course, our main one, is a canvas autograph of Oscar Isaac. And this was the reason we bought so many cards. And I got to give Blue credit, him and, you know, he's the one who bought this box. He just had this weird feeling one day and he saw Brett was streaming and he said, Brett, could you please, if I buy, you know, two boxes, would you open one on stream? It would mean so much to us. I just got this gut feeling and Brett was like, okay, sure, I'll do it. And he opened it and then boom, landed this Oscar Isaac autograph. And we got a very rare clip of, you know, Blue screaming <laughs> with his, uh, with his accent, you know, his, his Southern accent, uh, that's crept in and he's just like uh he was so happy <laughs> so uh so when he's when he got this i was like dude that's amazing and we still have not got you know we bought an, you know another few boxes i think like eight more boxes after we pulled this or he pulled this and um and we still haven't got another oscar isaac and even in the digital cards not another oscar isaac so to have one this was our goal you know blue really wanted this and to get it on a mr knight for blue and it was blue that you know paid for the box and and well technically it was purple that paid for the box but it was a uh, blue that got it on steel city and he watched it live. Like was awesome. It was so cool. And I think he was organizing cards when it happened, he said, and then he just heard Brett go, wait, what's this? And then he like w immediately went and was like, wait, what's happening? Uh, cause I begged him. I was like, please, if you're going to do these, you know, record them. Uh, and, and luckily he recorded that stream. So, so, uh, yeah, really cool. So happy we got that. And then again, in the back, I have our sky blues, you know, here just to show them off uh, some more. We got a lot of Sky Blues. This just shows how many boxes we purchased <laughs> roughly. So, because uh, we did get like two or three duplicates, but I got to be honest, out of all the boxes we got, like I said, we only got like two or three duplicate Sky Blue cards. So, uh, so that was good because that meant like every box came with at least a new one of these, which was great. And then I put a bronze in here of the uh, Moon Knight uh, Fist of Vengeance one just to show it off, a Midnight Blue and a Shattered. Um, but that was before I decided to actually put some over here and have them loose but overall i think this card set captured at least what i love about the show maybe not every little detail but certainly many of them and uh and i know blue was very excited about this set and we just i don't know we just 
it, it was a bonding moment for us too. It was a, it was a big communication thing with us, uh, you know, how we did this. Uh, Purple was involved because at that time he was the only one with actual income coming in. So after we got through our, you know, credit on PayPal, we were like, all right, dude, well, now we got to use actual money to get some of these. And you're the one who's working right now. Can we use some of your money to do this? And he was cool enough to say, yeah, as, you know, as long as we pay a couple bills too, you can, every once in a while, you can add a box or two um, as, you know, as things come in. And, and that was, it was really cool. I was glad we could all work together and, and accomplish this and, and get something like this that we really, really wanted. So yeah, thank you for watching this video. Uh, I know it's probably gone on very long, but I wanted to be a little detailed. I wanted to ramble a little bit and just kind of have fun with it and tell you some, you know, of the rarities and how to get some of these cards and, but also just mainly show our, our passion to some level. So hopefully you enjoyed. Thank you so much. Let me know down below if you have any questions about something I didn't cover. We can cover it down in the comments for sure. And I will definitely have more trading cards coming out. We have Halo ones coming out. We have some Dark Knights metal ones that we pre-ordered. And then we're going to have some Superman boxes that we're going to open very soon. Superman Day just passed us. So I want to do some Superman content to lead up to the Dark Knights Metal. And then also the announcement that Upper Deck made about having DC cards coming out in the fall. So we are DC fans too. And we're going to talk about some DC cards when they come out. But for now, we're Marvel lovers. Um, oh, you know what? Last but not least, I forgot to mention these. The Metal cards balance the scales. I, You know, I'm so sorry. I want to add these in real quick. So these were also rare to get. Um, the balance scales, there's 20 cards in one set and 10 in the short print set. And so we have some super short print cards here that are one in every 360 packs. And we got these metal ones that are one in every 90. And like I said, there's 20 of them. They feature two characters. And you can get some of these with dual autographs, I think, um, on them. Or they just do like a separate style of card with dual autographs. But it's cool to see two characters and, and to match them up. And some of them are like... You know, these two characters, which are great because they're kind of love interest, but then you also have like enemies and then you also have like the character and their avatar um, or this one, which is our favorite one, which has, you know, essentially me in blue. But, you know, uh, it has Oscar and Oscar, which is really cool. Um, and then you have the short print ones, which, again, reused images and stuff. But uh, but still, they did a, a nice job on the design. And then you have this one where it's Conchu versus Amit. So, I, yeah, I forgot about these, but I wanted to include those real quick uh, since they're sitting here. And just say again, thank you for watching the video. I, I really do appreciate it. And uh, we'll have more content very soon. But, you know, Moon Knight, we're going to do a review of the show, of the Blu-ray. Those will be coming up after this. And then we'll also look at some omnibuses, our omnibus collection of Moon Knight, and talk about those. But uh, probably a little while before we have more Moon Knight content, unless they, you know, announce more merchandise or toys or anything, which I'm hoping uh, for one announcement soon. Um, but I don't know for sure. So... We'll see if that happens. But until then, let's talk, you know, we'll just talk down in the comments about the cards. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you got any and what your favorite cards are, we'll keep talking down below. Thanks so much for watching the show as always. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And we'll see you in the future. Peace.